It's my pleasure to introduce Jim Guthrie, who is going to uh, manage or herd the cats for the rest of uh, the program this afternoon. Jim is the Patricia and Rhodes Hart Professor of Educational Leadership and Policy at Vanderbilt University, and also the Principal Investigator for the National Center on Performance Incentives at Vanderbilt. He has had a long and distinguished career in education, uh, which would take me the rest of the time to tell you all about, so you can read about his extraordinary accomplishments in the biographies in your folder. Um, but the thing I think I want to emphasize is the really unusual variety of perspectives he brings to his teaching and scholarship on education. He's been a parent, a high school science teacher, uh, a longtime university researcher and scholar, a two-time member, two-term member, and board chairman of the bo elected Board of Education in Berkeley, California, uh, the founder of a management consulting company that works directly with states and school districts on leadership and management issues, just to name the ones I can remember offhand. Um, so he brings a huge variety of knowledge and personal experience uh, to his work. In terms of this session, I will also mention that he is currently the uh, policy director of the Center on Compre of Edu I always get this wrong. The Center on Comprehensive Educator Reform. No, that's not right. CSER. I always think about it as CSER. It's the federal center that um, provides technical assistance to the state school districts and schools that have received federal funds from the teacher incentive <laughs> fund in order to innovate in the area of teacher compensation. So he's out on the front lines these days working with these various um, groups who are trying to think about new ways of compensating teachers and seeing the challenges they face and also the progress that they're making. So I'm going to now turn the podium over to Jim, who will moderate, introduce our distinguished panel of discussants and moderate the discussion among them. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. <clears throat> there are four of us here, and I'll introduce my colleagues to you in just a moment, but I'll say that the biographies that are published and the materials available to you are extensive, and each of these gentlemen uh, deserves the attention you might give the reading of their biography. It's very impressive. And uh, given that there are four of us in about <clears throat> 12, 13 minutes, we're each going to speak very shortly and uh, then permit those of you who have questions to pose them. Uh, let me say, uh, on my immediate left, uh, Chancellor Klein uh, correctly um, put forth all of Jerry Weiss' accomplishments. They, they are just terrific. And I think that for what he has done over the period he has been superintendent at Montgomery County, he's clearly one of the nation's five or six most premier superintendents. And uh, all of us sit in admiration of what Jerry has accomplished. I know from personal con conversations, of which we've had many, uh, how he struggles with this issue of differential compensation, performance pay himself. And he has views about that that he'll make clear this afternoon in just a moment. And sitting on uh, Jerry's left is Dane Lynn of the National Governors Association. And um, governors have been remarkably important in this examination of teacher compensation, uh, particularly in places like Texas and, and Minnesota and Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, uh, Florida. We've had very, very forceful governors who have assisted in framing the issue and searching for solutions. And the uh, National Governors Associ Association is crucial in all of that. <clears throat> and then on my far left, your far right, John Wilson, comes as the executive officer of the National Education Association, which is the nation's largest and longest standing teacher union, has literally millions uh, of members, covering all, all our states and territories. And uh, I find it interesting, I, I believe, if I know John's background and, and Dane's background and Jerry's background, here we have somebody from North Carolina, somebody from Virginia, somebody from Maryland. These are all states which are historically well managed and are making good progress. We don't have anybody here from California, <laughs> uh, uh, except me. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's that. Uh, let me uh, say, John, by way of um, warning, I'm going to say two things here and then turn to you if that's all right. Okay, sure. Um, the two points I'd like to underscore, but it's, it's difficult to say anything new given both what Professor Palco and Chancellor Klein have already said. There's not much more that one could add to it or much more passion one could, could put to it. But I am uh, mindful of my first year as a science teacher in a small Northern California lumber town where I was taught as a science teacher to have experiments every week and I worked very diligently always to have an experiment and, and uh, engage these students as intensely as I could in scientific methods. And many of my experiments, including the one where I almost burned down the classroom, didn't, didn't go that well, but you know, I still worked at it. I found it interesting, in the room next to me was another science teacher who every day showed a film. Um, we called him Cecil B. DeMille, and <laughs> all the other teachers knew he was ineffective. He was the most senior teacher there and, of course, was paid twice what, what I was. And that, that, that elevated the question in my mind, and ever since, about I know why we have a single salary schedule and this report makes clear its history, its important hundred year history since invented in Des Moines and Denver. But the, uh, the conditions have changed. We know that the single salary schedule is in, it rewards things for which they're, they're ineffective. We're not absolutely clear what ought to be in its place. And that's the first point I want to underscore is that for most of this nation's history we have edu we have existed indeed flourished by educating an approximate 10 percent of our population. It worked. They ran the military, our universities, business, government, etc. Then the world changes in the last quarter of the 20th century and the global competition renders the fact that you just cannot succeed personally and maybe societally without a far wider educational spectrum. But no nation, particularly one of our size, has ever faced the challenge of having to educate almost everyone. That's new. And it's not easily done. I often hear a statement, well, we know how to educate everyone, we just lack the political will to do it. I don't think that is correct. There are too many unknowns about all of this. And one of the fundamental unknowns is what is the appropriate or correct way in which to compensate, remunerate, and incent teachers. That is not well known yet by anyone I know. Yet 80% of every school district budget is allocated toward people. It is the most, one of the most labor intense things we do in our economy. And it has been that way for a long time and getting more labor intense. So if we want to improve it, it's upon teachers that we must concentrate. And it's upon teachers that we, with teachers, we must find some way in which to design the compensation system. So we have a CED report which could not be more timely or more important or more well done. And now we have a variety of views about it. And John, let me start with you if I could. 